Hey guys, Rockabay here. Once again, what's up everybody? Welcome to my spoiler free review of Stranger Things Season 4, Volume 2. Man, oh man, oh man. Just, I mean, Stranger Things is just a series that I, funny enough, you know, I, I want to check out because. Halloween Horror Nights was doing a Stranger Thing, Stranger Thing like themed area, and it covered season ones, two, and three. Well, a little bit of season one when I went there, but mostly season two and season three. And I want to check out, and I heard about it, and I said, you know what? And we had Netflix, you know, we have Netflix. Like, hey, let's let's check it out, you know, it's, you know, because I, I like Halloween, I like Halloween Horror Nights, and I heard that, you know. Doing a Stranger Things things themed horror attraction area, so like, let's watch it so so we can know the references when we see it in, you know, when we see it in the show. When we want, you know, when we go to the attraction when we, that we see in the show, <laughs> if, if that makes sense. Once I to watch the sh to, to, what do I say is, let me say it again. When we watch the show to see, let, understand the references that's in the 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 theme area, horror theme area, Universal. There, that came out better. Jesus. My brain's fried. I was, just came off of working the hot sun at, at work. <laughs> anyway, you get what I'm, I you get what I'm saying. So, I checked out the first three seasons on Netflix before we went. We might as we, we we saw all season one, two, and three, and they were excellent. It was truly, truly excellent, and I am so glad I saw the series and also the attraction itself was fantastic, and I really, really enjoyed it. It's kind of like a, it was like a big '80s theme. Of horror and stuff, and it was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. I'm hopefully I'm, I might go to Halloween Horror Nights this year as well. I really I miss it going to it. Last the last year I wasn't really interested in it, but this year looks to be interesting to where I, even I want to go. So here's hoping it's good. But getting off track, sorry. So I really got into the show. So when season four was announced, I was ecstatic. Volume one, so wait, and it was like. Oh my god, and it's such a cliffhanger. I want to know more. Volume 2, man. I, know, I thought we had to watch it and watch like several episodes of like the first half. No. The, the first episodes, 8 and 9. 8 was like, I think, between an hour and a half to an hour and 40 minutes. And then episode 9 was two and a half hours. That were, uh, that were as long as feature, feature length films. But I, I guess they want to like cover you know a lot of ground and just get it out of the way because then I guess the, the creators knew that people were just gonna binge the rest of it because how how volume one ended in that cliffhanger the way it did so people want to like just and they figured that just fuck it we're just gonna put an hour and a half here and then two and a half hour here to wrap up the season and it was it was so good I was. I was laughing. I was crying. I was cheering. I, 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 I it was a, just an array of emotions, man. I mean, it's this the roller coaster of this ride. Just like wondering who's gonna die, who's gonna make it. It's just it, it was a lot of stakes running high in this episode because the main antagonist in this show was just an ugly, evil, dangerous, powerful threat. That if not that is not stopped would destroy not only Hopkins but the entire world as we know it, and it's up to these young kids. Which, jeez, man, they not be this like mentally scarred with all the insane shit that they see they've seen and gone through. Just no kid should go. I mean, no kid should have to go through this, man. I'm telling you, it's just insane the amount of shit these kids just went through but yet still somehow managed to like live a normal life and get through it despite all the insanity that they go through because the creatures they look scarier than ever intimidating as ever and just there were times you weren't sure the heroes were gonna make it and just like you're just on the edge of your seat biting your nails it's just it was just like it had me hooked man like it didn't even though they were, like, long, per se, it didn't feel like it. 
I was like, before you know, like it's over. Oh man, you know what I mean? And, it's, and, it's, and the way it ended, of course, it ended on a cliffhanger, which I believe that long confirmed it's gonna be a season five. So it's not. So it's like we're not sitting wondering. We're not to sit there and wonder will there be a season five? You know what I mean? There will be one. Don't worry. But still, it's just like, damn. I want. I want more. You know? I want more. I want more, man. But we gotta wait, man. Like with Legend of Vox Machina, we gotta wait. You know what I mean? We gotta wait. But damn, it. Mm, it was. Mwah, chef kiss. It was. Oh my God! It was so good. Kudos to the creators of Tinder Things, man. You, you just had a hit in your hands, guys. I mean, you knocked it out the park. I even love the little um, Domino's commercial they did tying into Tinder Things. Is this like? Is this good? Should this like? Even though it's been a while since the last season, the lot thanks to you know the pandemic, it really delayed things. But you know, thankfully, you know. You know, it, when it came back, it, it, it people like, oh yeah, Stranger Things, and people remembered like why it was so great and why they got into it in the first place. And I'm just so glad that people, me, people like me and others, share that enthusiasm. Why we love the show, why we got into it, and just how how great it was, and why it's so beloved. And even though it took a long time to, you know had this lazy season come out due to, you know, circumstances that was out of, out of their control, but still, but when it still came out, people were ready, and people were chomping at the bit for the second half, once the, because me and people, because when it came out, we ripped through the first half of volume one of, of season four, and when volume two was coming out July 1st, we, I, as soon as I watched the latest episode of Critical Role, campaign team, of campaign three, episode 24, it's like, me and Mealy jumped into to certain things, and just like, let's finish it, but that was really late, we saw that it was long, so me and the brother who's really into it, it's like, okay, let's watch the first one, and then watch the second one tonight. We gotta do something that the following day, because that was like I'll watch a few, but like, it was broken down to like two long episodes, two long like episodes or episodic movies, if you will, and it was just worth it, man. I mean, it's this, God, and these kids are like also very smart. They make a lot of smart decisions. They're not making dumb, careless decisions. Like these are like some smart ass kids. I mean, granted, you know, it, it could have it done things better, maybe, but given the stuff they had to work with and what they had, you know, the the, the resources they had to work with, I mean, the man, the, the fact that they were able to do they, they were able to do what they were able to do was amazing in itself. And of all the characters, even new characters in this season, and Eddie's one of them. Eddie, dude, I mean, he was just and just an awesome dude, man. I really loved, I love his character. He was funny, he was charismatic, he was weird, but in a good kind of way, and I really liked the man. It's this, he's a cool, like, D&D &D bro, and I just really wish I, hopefully, you know, whatever I do, because I want to get into D&D &D myself, I hopefully meet someone like that and just have a baller time playing D&D &D together. Just He's just one of my favorite characters, of course, he's a typical jock guy, I forget his name, but he, I know he was a big, typical douchebag. Oh man, it was a big moment with one. Of, he has a big moment with one of the characters, and uh, I won't say any more. But it was it was beautiful to watch. It was very, it was like intense at times, but at the end it was just mm, delicious. I did not say more. I that's I've said too much already. But you know the character I'm talking about, giant douche. I just mm, I did not like him. It's just like especially it's like when a big moment happens, like he's gonna get in the way of something, isn't he? Like and he did. It's like oh god. He, it's just, I hate the shit of, like, the misunderstandings and not want to listen and shit. It's just, like, just, oh, I just hate it. And it's just, it's, you know what I mean? It's just, but I'm going to show you, but this going to show you how, how much you care about these characters and wanting them to succeed. The fact that you, this douchebag character is getting in the way of, like, what they're trying to accomplish is just, like, I'm going to show you that how much you I care about the show and how much I'm, in, I'm you're invested in that when, you know, when the villain's trying to get in the way and stuff, it's just... You just want to root for them to succeed, but it's overall, it just, if you're waiting for my review, which I don't know what the hell you're waiting for, go see Stranger Things Season 4, Volume 2. It is glorious. I cannot wait for Season 5. Heard rumors that they're trying, they're trying to get Ryan Reynolds for it. I hope they do, but overall, I can't, Season 4 was one of my favorites yet. I cannot wait for Season 5, whenever that comes out. Take your time. 
but know that I am ready and willing to watch that stuff. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed my review. As always, please make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. As always, Rocket Blade signing out. Hope to see you guys again soon. Peace out. Have a great day. Goodbye.